So you go from having two great coordinators who become head coaches to guys that aren't as good as their predecessors, and the proof is in the pudding. And it all come back, comes back to Sirianni because if you're a truly great head coach, and I'm not being critical of him here, I'm trying to help everyone and myself understand why he seems afraid right now. I think he feels like he's being exposed right now, Chris. Not that he is, but I think that's where that is coming from. That uncertainty, that quality, that issue with the demeanor during the game. I think he realizes, and the Eagles fans are smart enough to see this. There's a difference between Jets fans and Eagles fans because they're both demanding. But Jets fans can be all over the place in what they're demanding. Eagles fans cut with a scalpel. They know. They they see right through it. They know exactly what the issue is. They drill down to the heart of it. And I think Nick Sirianni's worried that they're going to figure out. I'm not saying, I see, this is tough for me. I'm trying to give you real analysis here without bashing the guy. I think within him, he's afraid they're going to wake up and say he's the problem. Yeah, well, he's rattled right now. They're rattled as an organization. It's showing. Eagles fans can see it, right? And then I think when you add on top of the Eagles fans can see it, they're frazzled, they're demanding, they want more, they know how good this football team is, and now you're seeing you know, the better players on the football team also kind of have those same type of actions and emotions. I think that's where it gets scary as a head coach, and that's where it's, yeah, it's, it's, you, you got to find the right messaging and the right attitude here to kind of pull your team through a tough moment, and we'll see. Uh, ho- you know, hopefully for them, they can get a good win, play good football this week, and feel confident about going into wild card round, right? But even with the Giants game two weeks ago, you know, played good, but it wasn't great. We know that, and it was the Giants and Tommy DeVito, and then there they were, kind of messing things up, and it became a football game. You know, they can't get out of their own way right now. Let alone even when they are out of their own way, they're just not playing that great of football. And now there's a Devonte Smith injury on top of that. Right. So now people, you can focus a little bit more on AJ Brown. Oh, whoa, well, hey, because that's that's the beauty of the Eagles. Wait, we gotta stop the run. Wait, we'd like to double AJ Brown, but wait, the guy on the other side's faster than AJ Brown and actually scary to go deep. What do we do? You know, so to not have him out there with a high ankle sprain, that's a big deal for a struggling offense right now. Yeah, and they, they are very tight lipped about that one, but still walking boot and crutches a day after the injury was suffered. Sirianni also said he's sticking with Matt Patricia as defensive play caller. And it's not like you can just go pick another one off the shelf. Yeah, right. He happened to have Patricia around. Like, he's sticking with Patricia because he's got nowhere else to go. He's not a defensive guy. There's no Vic Fangio they can hire as a late season consultant like they did last year. There's just, or maybe there is, maybe there's somebody out there I'm not thinking of that they can bring in to help fix this. But Patricia's the guy who just happened to be in the building when they realized that maybe Sean Desai wasn't the answer when it comes to running that defense the way it needs to be run. So it's, it's amazing right now to see for as great as they were. And you saw this coming because you were saying when they were winning these games early in the year and they weren't winning them in blowout fashion, they were just racking up wins and racking up wins. And that's good. But it I was telling you the there quality was wasn't great, right? Yeah. Where yeah. where the bottom might fall out. And we got so caught up in the tush push and you know, it became the hot thing and we talk about this, we talk but it's like they really weren't as dominant as they were last year and now it's come back to roost and unless the Cowboys do a face plant on FedEx Field, the Eagles are going to be stuck going on the road. Most likely to go visit the four seed, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, Atlanta, however the NFC South shakes out this weekend. Much different road to the playoffs for the Eagles than last year. Yeah, much different. Or to the Super Bowl, I mean. Yeah, we'll see if they can uh, rally here. We'll, we'll see what they can do. They're still dangerous. We know that. Nobody's going to like to see Philadelphia coming into town, uh, especially some NFC South team who I can sit here and tell you that nobody in the NFC South is as talented as the Eagles. I can say that, but as inconsistent as the Eagles have been and some of the issues we're seeing and teams just now, the one thing you kind of looked at was when they, their run defense is still pretty good. Now that's fallen apart. You know, the past game teams just picked them apart. 
to where, yeah, the NFC South, those teams aren't as talented as the Eagles, but they've been playing better football, some of those teams here down the stretch, and certainly can beat Philadelphia. And here's what the Eagles need to do. You know, we've talked about the Bills earlier where the turning point was for them. You almost need to bottom out. There needs to be a bottom, and then things go the other way. Or you just need to accept you're not the team you were last year. You're not the team that went 10-1. and one. Well, you are. You're just being exposed a little bit now. But the Chiefs, I think, have finally accepted we're going to play the hand we've been dealt this Hopefully, year. Hopefully, right. And not be, not be pissed off that our cards aren't better. Yeah. I think that's the key. The Eagles need to just play the hand they've been dealt, quit thinking about how great their last hand was, and make the most out of this one. I don't, I, I, I don't disagree with you there. I, I don't. Stop looking for the magic of last year. Accept who you are this year. You're going to win games uglier. It's not going to be this pretty show that you put on all the time last year. It's a different year, right? And it, no, nobody really cares about style or pretty points, really, when it's all said and done. There's been a lot of teams that we've seen that won the Super Bowl, and you go back and go, oh, let's unpack their regular season. You'd go, oh, Man, there were some weeks there that it wasn't that pretty, but they got it done. They hung around to where they could finally come together and play their best football. And right now, it just it doesn't feel like that's anywhere in sight in Philadelphia. That's what I think is crazy, is it actually feels like it's going the other way. It feels like they're playing worse football. And that's where it's a little weird, and we'll see if they can regain some of this magic this week and into the playoffs. They've lost four out of five. Four out of five. Should be more. And that came after yeah. that came after the Monday night upset of the Chiefs and the game against the Bills that they pulled out of their butts. Yes. It it could be it could be six out of seven this losing streak for the Philadelphia Eagles. So, you know, th if this was a start to the season, one and four, we'd say this team's no good. Well, it's been one and four the last five weeks. As we're pushing toward the climax to the season. It's all coming together. You're supposed to be playing your best football. They're one and four, and it all started against the 49ers. Maybe they just need Dom DeSandro back on the sideline. Maybe we're all changing <laughs> yeah. the playoffs when Big Dom is back <laughs> down there. But uh, Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.